with their private jets. They were that skinned. And one of the other things he did was close down some of these small shops. So after coming into the area and siphoning half a million quid out each year for four mm-hmm. years, they then decide they don't want to be in this area. And, and to rub salt into that wound, the rumour starts going round. The Tesco's are closing because they're getting so much stuff robbed from the shop. Right? And you're going, now does that, no evidence for that at all. No. Absolutely no evidence. But it's a bit like, uh, it, it's a bit like, be, it's like, like being a, ste- yeah, it's a bit like being a stereotype. Stereotype, if somebody's closing down a canton, it's got to be because it's being robbed. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Now, that's not the case. So these shops that were already there before Tesco's are still there after Tesco's. They're still doing the business. There's still people going in, drawing money out the cash machines. There's people doing the lottery. There's people buying the loaves. People buying a pint of milk. Whatever, whatever, whatever. 26, right? Tesco's is gone now. Yeah. So this, and one of the one of the things that I had the local council say, it'll be great to have a Tesco's because it's brands that people understand. It's not all this sort of gems. We've got a little, got a big little, and you go into little, and it's like, you know, being sent on a, a language course, isn't it? You know. What's a verst? What's a schnock and dock and you know what I mean? Oh, All these things. Only the sausages. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. It's fine. Like, but of course, the kidney beans, it'll say right. A sausage is a sausage. A kidney beans a kidney. So I've never had that problem with little, and now. All of a sudden, Lidl's really popular. Yeah. It's gone from being like, oh, you don't shop in Lidl or all they do, yeah. Mm. What do you get? Well, there's no choice. This is what happens with media, though, isn't it? Yeah, if of course. the media says it's okay to shop at Lidl, now everyone shops yeah. at Lidl. Little yeah, little adverts on the telly. You have lots of middle-class people going, oh, I can't believe, you know, that was only £4.22 instead of £8.66. And it's like, well, the, re- the reason Lidl and Aldi came to Kensington wasn't for the middle class people who wanted mm. a certain type of pros- prosecco ammo or whatever. They, they were there because it was a poor area and it was cheap yeah. and people could buy. And that's why I'm wondering. I, I always went there because. I shop at Lidl. Yeah, you, you, you know. It's it affordable. It's really good. If I you got a solid food in Lidl, it was about like, you know, you, like your pools went away, you know. You go to Tesco's. It's bad, you can bang it under quid in Tesco's without even thinking yeah. about it. What I always find funny with stuff like this is, is people are so attached to brands yeah. as if it's going to be higher quality. Yeah, of course. Like, the regulations for what can be put in a supermarket yeah. already have to be to quite a high standard to yeah. be suitable for human consumption. And I just think, like, a bag of carrots, whether you pay <coughs> 40p for them or whether you pay a pound, yeah. is a bag of carrots. Yeah, of course. So I don't understand yeah. why you yeah. pay more. Yeah. And a lot of manufactured stuff... Yeah. You know, so part of the same factory, some yeah, of them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, your bottle of pop that's got little on it's probably not been produced much further from a bottle of pop with something else on it. Um, at my school, which is in Heaton Chapel, yeah, Stockport, um, St Anne's, um, each year they used to bring people in to see if people wanted to work at McVitie's after yeah. school, and um, they had like a careers thing, and you know. And they said that McVitie's chocolate digestives, the factories produce the Asda Smart Price ones. Yeah, yeah. But like, not even the Asda Normal, the Smart Price ones. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. Like maybe they don't now. I'm not yeah. in case anyone's fact yeah. checking me, but like, yeah. just to make sure, you know, when you eat a biscuit, yeah. it's like when they do these tests and they go, you know, they don't tell you what brand it is, yeah. which one's yeah. all that's definitely yeah, such a yeah. thing. And it's, it's, it's not subjective it's at all. Or oh, it is subjective. It's sub- subjective because. You know, it, 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 there was a thing done. There's a there's a program, and a book called Free Economics. And if you get a chance, read it because it's a fascinating book. But they actually, they, what they actually did, there was a, in, in these two university professors who wrote, who wrote this book. One of the things they did, not from the book, but they actually did it as part of their radio program. So they do podcasts. Was they have this wine wine drinking society in their university, and you've got to bring. You know, it's all it's snobbery, basically. It's <laughs> like, you know, it's like, oh, it's a so-and-so, it's a so oh, it costs $400 a bottle, blah, blah, blah. blah. So all that. Yeah. So they decided to to put do a blind tasting yeah. of it. And none of the expensive wines were, were, were noted to be the best. See, going back to Lidl and Aldi there, yeah. what I always find amazing is if you ever go in, which I'm sure most people that are going to listen to this have. Yeah. Um... A lot of them have labels on them, the winning bronze, silver, gold yeah, awards, the winning do, yeah. taste yeah. awards, food and drink awards, all this kind of thing. 
there was one at Asda that was like a three pound bottle of rose, and that one like best tasting rose of one year and stuff. And I just think like I am quite a firm believer of if if something tastes yeah, nice, yeah, and yeah. it's also like good value, yeah, I'd yeah. rather buy that than buy something yeah. that's more expensive because I just think like. If you enjoy something, I don't see the point in getting something that seems kind of more pretentious or makes you look a certain way. Well, it's like things like don't like you, don't mobile like phones, it. isn't it? It's iPhones. Yeah. It's Apple Mac. Have that have this stasis attached to them, don't they? Where mm. you know, you, you you know, I I use computers. I've used computers for the last thirty years, and you know, I've, I'm not going to say I've never owned an Apple Mac. I have owned an Apple Mac, but you, you know, why on earth are you paying? twice as much for something that does exactly the same thing. An Apple Mac will be up to thousands of pounds, 1,500 quid, for something you can pay 700 quid for. Mm. And it get exactly the same end results. And I used to do a lot of video editing 10, 15 years ago. And one of the things about video editing is you, you couldn't get the software that was available on Apple Mac on, for the PC. Right. Now, as soon as that software started being made available for PCs... <coughs> You know, people like me started using PCs for video editing. And I used to always ask people, can you tell what this was ve- edited on? I'm going, well, how can you do that to video? I'm going, precisely. It's a piece of video that's been edited in a certain way. And it's the end result you're looking at. No, this is better because it's edited on an Apple Mac computer. You know, yeah. and then we always got told, Apple Macs never crash. You know, that was the big... Yeah, you never get a virus Yeah, and all that, which is total bunkum. PCs very rarely crash now. I had the, the one that have an Apple Mac, it used to crash. And it was a bit like, hang on a minute, how do you not supposed to? So you sort of, you get lulled into this, you know, this sector where you want this thing because it's got a certain kudos yeah. attached to it. And then you start even making things up about it. I suppose in a way it's kind of like a vaccination effect. It's like it's put into kind of mainstream media like this is the best yeah. you should have this this is great it looks great it has all these features but i think especially with phones like obviously i think when i was younger you do you do kind of want the latest phone yeah, of course you do, yeah. Yeah. Like everyone does we all want things we have to be honest but i think especially when you start paying for things yourself <laughs> yeah. and then you I had an iPhone, I've had a few different iPhones, and I switched to a Samsung, which is still quite like a good branded phone. Yeah. But there's always this joke that, like, oh, Android phones are a bit crap compared yeah. to iPhones. Like, and I can just tell you, it worked. It still yeah, works yeah. so much better than yeah. my iPhone, yeah. in my personal opinion. But one drawback for iPhones for me was you can't download things on it. So if you've got files, like, I can use my phone as like a mini computer, so it's yeah. really handy for uni, yeah, handy yeah. for work timetables this kind of thing whereas iPhone just won't do it it doesn't support certain things yeah. so I think like it's like my mum for example she like bless her she can't use a phone yeah. she's never been able to use a phone she can she uses it for what a phone was for like to yeah. ring to text to contact people yeah. and the thing is she has the latest iPhone so my brother got it out, which is nice but like she doesn't know how to FaceTime she doesn't know no. about all these features but we are kind of coerced into doing yeah, it of course, all yeah, the yeah, time yeah but if you look at phone contracts, people say, yeah. I've got X amount of data and I've got X amount of minutes. Do you use that and much Exactly, now? yeah. No, no. It's like you, you take it to the minimum and see you see whether you, you still take use all that up. And if you do, then increase it. But, you know, they phone you up and say, we wanted to give you the new offer with all this extra stuff. And it's like, you know, it's just flannel, basically. Yeah. But we all live in this consumer society. And this is what I'm basically saying about yeah. Kensington. Is yeah, one one way, yeah, one, yeah, bringing it back. <laughs> one, one way of addressing this 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 lack of parity yeah. in wages and things like that is making sure. That's one of the things we try and do with everything. Is that if we, you know, we employ local people, we have people who work for us here. We spend it locally if we can. You know, we we won't go looking to employ someone from outside the area. And and if you think about it, we get a thousand pounds to spend. And we spend most of that thousand pound in the area. That money's, you know, still floating around. So mm. when I get paid every month, I will use the local petrol station. I will use the the local Lidl. I'll go to the local Chippy. I might go into town for a meal or two. I'd, who knows? You know what I mean? Yeah. Obviously, we're not got a cinema, so I can't go go to a cinema. So the things that I do, if if I can, I'll spend it in the area. And there's ways to address that problem. And one of them is developing a local currency. 
the city should be in a position to develop a local currency. And and we, we looked into it one time because I got really, really That's interested. really interesting. I've never heard someone say that. No, well, there's a, there's a Brixton pound. Oh, OK. There's a Brixton pound, the £20 note, and Brixton's got a picture of David Bowie on it. All right. right? And, and how it works is there's currency. You've got a Brixton pound and you've got a UK pound. And they're both worth twenty pounds or one pound or whatever. Yeah. But what you do is local, local um, businesses. The, the trick is to get a number of local businesses signed up for it. So let, let's say, for example, you know, people are a bit like, oh, shall I buy? Shall I buy that table and chairs for forty quid? You know, right? If you buy it in UK money, it's forty quid. If you buy it in Kensington pounds. It's 36 quid. It's got like 10% off it or whatever, right? So you, you exchange your UK yeah, pound. People love an offer, I do. Yeah, <laughs> well, you, well, you get an offer, but only if you're buying it in Kensington mm. pounds. So it means the man who runs the shop is going to get business that he wouldn't have got. The person who buys the table and chairs has got a set of table and chairs cheaper than he would have got if he'd have paid it with English money, right? So there, there's... The money is then staying in the area. It's not going anywhere else. You can't spend your Kensington pounds in the city centre. You can only spend them in Kensington. So that the money that you spend, imagine you're paying for all your food in Kensington pounds, and you get a ten percent discount on all your food. You know the the the, the shop I was telling you about that's open for twenty four hours a day. Imagine if he operated on the Kensington pound. So you spend a tenner in there, and it's only going to cost you nine quid. Well, you know, it's only a pound, but you magnified that up by that up. yeah, and and you, that, the technology you can you can you can do that with now can all be on your phone. Yeah. It can all be like a version of PayPal, so you don't even have to look for a Kenny a Kenny Penny, you know. Kenny Penny. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and you know it's but and and the, and one of the things about it, there's, there's a couple of books on it, and you know I heard it on the radio when I first heard it. The guy who's the who's the UK expert on local currencies is. A lecture at Liverpool University. All right. So you go down and knock on his door. We've had him on the phone in here and Me say to him, Steve, "Tell me all about how, how local currencies work." We've had him on. Go. We've oh, had him on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm late. So it's sort of yeah. like, it's sort of like, I don't even have to go to California to talk to, mm. you know, Adam J. Shickland, who's the expert on it. The guy's sitting down there in an office, and he'll answer your phone, he'll answer your emails, and he'll tell you all about it, and about. Three years ago, Joe Anderson had this idea to have a local currency. What's happened? None. Mm. Because I don't think it works on a city wide. I think it works on an area wide. You know, so you can have you can have a croissant of inequality currency. It could that, only that's be used. the cafe next door yeah. for anyone that doesn't. It's know. also it's a it's a notional <laughs> area in Liverpool of all the poor areas: mm -hmm. Anfield, Kirkdale, Everton, Kensington, Granby, Toxteth. Dingle, if all those had a quasant of inequality yeah. pound, you could go anywhere in that area, spend your money. See, I always think there's a kind of unwillingness to try new ideas because cause everything does come down to money. Yeah. Like it, in the end, it really does. Like councils, governments, etc. say, oh yeah, but if we lose out on this, then yeah. it's not worth doing it. But like you just said, with all the housing redevelopment, yeah. Bit, like sometimes things are hit and miss you do lose out on stuff but I think without ever trying anything you don't know what could work because no. I think what you see no matter what you look at around the world people keep doing the same stuff expecting a different result and then going oh well you know we, yeah. we did try it never worked, like, yeah. well you didn't ask anyone no. what might work you didn't ask for an alternative but that's that's trusting communities to, mm. to find the solutions themselves and I'm a yeah. big believer that you know I, I don't artificially live in Kensington you know, I'm not here because I'm I'm a I'm a secret millionaire or I'm a, yeah, or I'm a, sure? a sleeper for the KGB <laughs> or something like that. I'm here KGB. because because I came here in 1992. And it was the only place I could afford to live, yeah. right? In my current circumstances, and so ever since then, you know, I've lived here because it's a cheap place to live. It's cheap and it's very central to the city centre. It's central to everywhere. It's a bit, that's why I live yeah. here. Yeah. You can walk in the city centre. I can walk to my uni from yeah. here and everything, and the uh, money uh, it saves me on buses is amazing. And <laughs> it's, it's at the confluence of several roads, so there's lots of bus buses to different parts of the city if you want yeah. to. Now, 
that you know that that to me. If I